Hi, this is Mary, the winemaker at Capo Creek Winery here in Hillsborough, California. We're located in the Dry Creek Valley AVA of Sonoma County, about 90 minutes north of San Francisco. And I'm sitting right outside our tasting room, which overlooks beautiful Eva's Vineyard, inspired by the singer-songwriter Eva Cassidy. We're going to bring you two new releases today. But first, I wanted to give you a little glimpse of what's behind me here. Hopefully, you can see the barn off in the distance there. And then over on the other shoulder, maybe you can see part of Eva's Vineyard. Eva's Vineyard is a very special vineyard. It has the old vines that are 50 to 70 years old, interplanted with Alicante and Carignan grapes, which so those extra varieties give us a field blend and a very special character to our Zinfandel wines that a lot of other uh, wine bottles do not contain. So we're gonna do two releases. Uh, very excited to bring these both here. They're both absolutely delicious. We've got our Zinfandel 2018 and our Tremolo 2017. First thing you want to do when you're drinking wine is make sure you have the best glass possible. That means a nice thin rim on top and then a nice sized bowl so that you can really capture all those aromas and really enjoy them to their fullest. We use the Chat Duisa glasses here at the winery, which are workhorses and they have a nice heft to them so they're weighty and yet they still have that delicate rim the um they're a little bit more resistant to breakage than a lot of other wines not totally unbreakable as you can see if you stay tuned for my blooper at the end but they are more resistant for sure um this one we call our fat daddy because he's got the fatter shorter bowl and then this one we call our big daddy he's a little bit taller so we're gonna start out with our Fat Daddy and go with the lighter of the two wines. This one is our Zinfandel. I wanted to show you really quickly our labels and talk to you about our logo. The capo is a little clamp that goes on the neck of a guitar and um, can change the pitch. And then each of the labels is a half guitar with a different sound hole. So there's different pieces of artwork on each of our labels. And for us, the capo is a symbol that represents all the wonderful things Bob and I wanted to be around in our retirement. We've had crazy busy lives with six kids and full-time careers. And Bob is still working as a neonatologist, but uh, hopefully he can go part-time sometime soon. Um, and so again, and music kind of brought us a lot of solace in some of the difficult parts of our lives. So incorporating all this beautiful nature, uh, we love to play in the dirt. We've uh, been gardening our whole lives. And so playing in the vineyards is just an extension of that, but we also have our greenhouse garden. And so just all these beautiful things, lots of stuff, for, you know, corresponding to nature, and then of course the music. So let's taste it, okay? First, we're gonna take a peek at it and look at it before we taste it. And we're gonna check out what's the color of the wine? What does it look like? How transparent is it? This is a reddish color, kind of going toward garnet, so in the garnet spectrum. And if you're new at this, put a white piece of paper behind you and look through it, and it's a better assessment. But, uh, you know, once you've been doing this for a while, you can just put your hand there. It's very easy to see my fingers. So we would call this semi-opaque, semi-transparent. It's like kind of in the mid-range. Tells you that it's a lighter red wine. And then the color goes all the way to the rim. There is no thin, watery-looking rim around it. What happens is as wines age, red wines age, they lose their pigments and they fall down into the uh, base of the bottle. That's some of the stuff you see if you decant an old wine. But when they're younger, they hold on to their color. And so this rim goes all the way up to the edge. And it is a, 2017, a 2018, which is a relatively young wine. So next is the nose make sure that you stop and really give a good amount of time to the nose before you delve in and start drinking it the um way to do the nose is make sure you sometimes you go in a little bit deeper sometimes come back and one of the first things you're going to assess is the intensity so how easy it is is it to detect the nose and this already out here i can easily detect it before i even started beating it up so it's a medium plus nose which is nice and then kind of go through your categories. Okay, fruit first. Do you get the fruit or not? And this, you know, the classic fruit for Zinfandel is cherry. And this certainly delivers. It's bursting with cherries. And then you get some of those oak notes with a lot of baking spices. So it gives you a cherry pie kind of sensation. Very nice. 
And then there's some herbal notes in there going toward floral. So I would even say a little bit lavender in there. And then there's some fun licorice notes as well. Really nice. The way I like to do the nose is I like to put my nose up at the top of the glass and then bring the glass up. And that just, again, helps helps really bring out all those aromas. Okay, and the palette, here we go. Very nice, rich, soft, silky, I would say. Very nice on the palette, nice mouthfeel. And then of course that cherry pie fruit is right there. And there's baking spice, so it's comforting. Uh, licorice is less so than on the nose, but I can still detect it. And then there is um, a nice long finish to this. It's still developing. I can still get it all. It's not, the alcohol is not too high. And uh, a little bit of a caramelly note on the finish. So, you know, the classic food pairing for Zinfandel is barbecue. This certainly works. Um, but this, because of the fact that it's a medium body and medium acid, it'll hold up to a wide myriad of foods. It's a great everyday wine. Um, I could see this with a nice BLT or grilled cheese, something really simple. And, uh, once again, that length on there, that's, that's so enjoyable. Okay. Let's try the tremolo and see how we do with that. Okay. We're going to pull out our big daddy and... Here's the bottle for Tremolo. Again, it's a different uh, different half guitar there with a the sound hole. And we're gonna pour a small amount in here so we can really enjoy those aromas. And we're gonna check out the color. Right away, you can see it's a much darker wine. It's a dark purple instead of the reddish notes here. So we're getting, we call this a ruby. And right, I cannot see my fingers through it at all, so it's opaque, so we know it's a bigger wine. It's still a young wine. It does not have a watery rim. And so, and sure enough, it's a 17, which is young for a cab. Um, this Tremolo is a blend of Cab Sauvignon 86%, the Syrah 10%, and the Carignan is 4%. And this is the sister wine to our straight cab. Sometimes we buy our cab grapes from Sonoma and some from Napa. We grow a lot of grapes around here. We have two more hillsides of grapes besides what you can see behind me. But Cab Sauvignon, we do not. So there's a beautiful place called Moon Mountain in Sonoma, which has great Cab grapes. But then also we did a couple years with Napa Cab grapes. So this is from the Napa Hall. Um, we did, um, like I said, the straight sister cab is still aging in the cave. So 17 is not old for a cab. We have full color here. We're going to go ahead and check out the aromas. Uh. This is really nice. I want to take a bath in this. Maybe put a little behind my ears. Very, very nice. Okay, darker fruit for sure right off the bat, which is typical of a cab. This is a, like a dark raspberry going into a blackberry with a little bit of huckleberry in there. And this, so that you can easily detect the fruit, but then there's all these other flavors as well, but they don't overwhelm the fruit, which is really nice because sometimes you get cabs and all you get is the oak. And the fact that you can still get a lot of that fruit in here, I, we think is really nice. Mm, very nice. Okay, what are those other flavors? And let's see, we got a little bit of graphite and some cola and tea, tobacco. This is like um, walking in the woodland area. So yeah, I just like forest floor kind of earthiness to it. I think that's partly in from the Syrah as well. Really pretty. Okay, so time for a taste. Mm. Also a really nice mouthfeel. So you could definitely tell that there's a lot more tannins in here than the other wine, but they're well integrated. So 
You could drink this wine by itself without having to do food. It's got enough structure that it's going to age another 10, 15 years. Um, wow. Definitely all that dark berry fruit, very full bursting with those berries. And I'm a big berry person, so I really like that. But then I'm getting all those other flavors in there too. All that cola. A little bit of cassis, a little bit of a darker fruit. And uh, yeah, that tea tobacco all coming through. Graphite for sure. And what's really nice about this too is it, again, has a nice long length. So the flavors just keep developing over time. You know, you're just sitting here still feeling it, still thinking about it. And on the very end of this finish, we get some chocolate notes, which are, which is super great. This can uh, pair with a lot of bigger meals, you know, so very short ribs, uh, cassoulet, a stew, lamb. This also goes well with just a simple steak, whether you pan fry it in the pan or you know, do it on the grill. I like this, but this also would go really good with just a nice bowl of lentils and a little bit of goat cheese. So it's, it's not so overpowering that you have to do, you know, the protein in meats and stuff will help tame tannins and these tannins are so well integrated, you don't have to do that. So a lot of vegetarian dishes, mushroom dishes, this would pair well with. Okay, so in summary, this is the most gorgeous place on earth, so make sure you come visit us. We're kind of private, we're off the beaten path and we do all private tasting. So it's um, super enjoyable from that perspective. Make sure you get a good glass when you drink ponder the wines and really appreciate them before you gulp them all down, even though it'd be very tempted to do so, especially with these two releases. But be safe, take care, and God bless. Stay tuned for the blooper. Some darker fruits in here. We have like plum and uh, like maybe a really dark raspberry going into a boysenberry to a hint of a black raspberry. It's not as dark as the companion wine of this. Oh shit. Okay. Hold on.